Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here, and in this episode of Painting Masters, we'll look at works by Sergei Temerev. Now, this is an artist I've known for a long, long time now, and the thing he's most proficient and most prolific at is skies and seas. Now, one major lesson I took from him is that there is, personally for me, a lot to learn when it comes to the control and the technique of watercolor and, and their pure application, meaning using water and paint to create beautiful effects. And you'll see all of the skies and the seas that he paints. It's just amazing. And that's my personal lesson that I have a huge way to go. So with that, without further ado, let's take it to the computer and look at some of his works. So let's get started. I wanted to start with something very typical of his. Um, and again, the two main motifs, if you will, or subjects are sky and sea. Now, a couple of things to note. His rendering of clouds is incredible. This is something we'll see a lot in this video, so in almost every painting. So you can see the shapes are done so well with the borders around them. Um, the, the composition of the sky itself, so where he places each and every cloud, is just really genius. Then you get these clouds that go over other clouds. So the sky always turns out to be this very glorious part of the painting, which I think is very clever. One more thing that I absolutely love about this one, you'll see it in others as well, is how the clouds end. It's just, it's just like they end a little higher than what you see the city itself. And that just creates this, for me personally, a feeling of rain clouds, which I love. So this is really nice. Now, another thing, and that's the key element, I think, in, in his work, is the variety of edges. The way he builds the shapes is... A, a lot of interest is created in it thanks to the huge variety of edges. So you get, for example, these smaller uh, highlights. In this case, you get a lot of dry brush. Like here, you can see it's pretty dry and a rugged edge. Same for this edge, same for this edge. But then he contrasts it beautifully with some softer edges. Like if you look at this one here, that's a really soft edge. And also soft transitions. So you get these very smooth transitions. Now, one more thing I want to say is the temperature and the, and the saturation. You see how he moves beautifully from these little yellow ochre kind of muted um, warm colors and then onto the more classic bluish colors, which I think is really beautiful. You'll see a lot of that too. Now, I did want to start with this one because there is a strong element of a cityscape as well, which isn't always visible. So I wanted to show one that has a variety. So you have the boat here, you have this magnificent uh, sense of light uh, in shadow, and then, of course, some light ripples on the water. Just beautiful. Now, I'm going to move on to the next one because we have a lot to get to. And I'm not necessarily going to talk at length about every painting um, because the, the, there is a lot of repetition here. Mostly, it's the same subjects and there's quite a lot of them. But here, two things. We're going to get to the, the sea itself soon, which is, I think, really the, the most amazing part here. But first, look at the sky. Compared to the previous ones, here we have this beautiful cloud that's kind of spilling downwards. And that motion is so beautiful. And it seems misleadingly easy to create something like that, but that's actually not the case. To get this gradual transition, a lot of cleverness and playing around with the uh, angle of the paper and the movement of the color is required. You need to know how to control the, the, the canvas itself, if you will, and to, to tilt it uh, in different directions to get that effect. And then notice this, again, super blended, and then this rough shape here, so, so smart, you know, how he creates these paper textures within that. And it requires quite a lot of speed as well. Now let's move on to the ocean itself. He usually is very minimal with the boats and the city as we've seen, but look at the water. In such a clever uh, shift from this deep muted green all the way to, uh, which almost is blue, bluish green, all the way to these lighter blues that better reflect the sky. And then he even got this wave kind of rolling towards us. Um, very clever use of water and paint to get the impression he wants. Um, this is something that just pure experience is required because it's, it's not easy. It's really not easy to get these shapes to look good. Now here, look at this blue. Again, even stronger than the previous one. And this contrasts beautifully with the yellower ones or the peach 
the slight peach. It's all very, very uh, nuanced. The, the colors aren't in your face too strong. They're very nuanced. Look at this glorious sky. A bit of a simpler, probably smaller size as well. With this big cloud and then this thinner one cutting through it, a bit lighter. A very strong um, element that you'll see in his work. Just the rendering of the sky is pure genius. Um, and look at like how the sun creeps from atop this cloud and sort of spills into the, the main uh, section of the cloud. It's just so smart. Let's move on. Another one. And this I love too because you do get to see some of the city. And again, he doesn't paint that as much. So it's nice to see these things. Um, a, a bit of a feeling of a rainy day or wetness. You see a lot of reflections here on the road to the right with the buses and the cars. Barely visible, but still there. Um, then hinting at some architectural details. But again, the main king or queen of this painting is the sky and the sea. Um, and look at the subtlety here. And then we're going to move to the next one. Look at the subtlety of this is more of a blue of this area. But this is more of a warmer type of neutral gray. This is a cooler gray, warmer gray. And this play of them together creates this really incredible impression. When you look at this, you can kind of tell it's the sky because of the slight coolness and blueness. When you look at this, it's easy to tell that it's a cloud and the sun shines through it. And where the sun is strongest, notice how it goes warm. And then the farther you go from it, it gets cooler and cooler from the center. You can really tell that the sun is somewhere around here, you know, somewhere in this area. And then it spills all the light outwards onto this cloud and this cloud. And this It's just crazy good. And the wetness here at the bottom, just such a good control of the medium. Notice even this small ripple here that I don't know if it's intentional, if there, it's a trail created by a boat from earlier. I don't know what it is, but it's just so good looking. Uh, now I wanted to share some variety. So I did look for a variety of colors and temperatures. So here we have a warmer one, clearly at sunset. Very simple, yet <laughs> misleadingly hard. It's not easy to get that result. Um, and look at the clouds. He's really a master of them in any light and shadow situation. Look at how they're very orange at near the bottom and then they turn blue in an instant. And it's, again, nothing is on the nose. It's very gentle. It's a very gentle transition. We got some ripples in the water. We got the beautiful reflection of the sun in the water and also yellow and blue. And he's able to maintain the independence of yellow and blue. They don't mix too much. They don't create too much of a green, really. And notice this nice little blue creeping up from the top, hinting that it's I don't know if it's sunset or sunrise, honestly, but it looks like the night is approaching and getting more and more dominant within the sky. So if you look even upwards more than the painting allows, it's probably going to be bluer. Um, and, and the clouds really conform to the sky. If you look at the sky is orange and then the cloud is orange, then the sky is blue and the clouds are blue. It's just really genius. So we're going to pick up the pace because we have a lot to look at. Uh, what's different for me with this one is you see how the sun rays shine through the clouds. That's really clever and probably a bit of lifting done in there. Uh, maybe even with um, uh, pa uh, uh, paper towel or something like that. And then what's really cool is this section here with the waves um, and a bit of green there, you know. So just a lot of originality and, and really courage to do things a little differently. Notice all of these lines kind of smeared downwards. I really love these kinds of effects. Let's move on to another one. So this is fairly different as well. You see there's an undertone of red uh, in it. And, and the red really spills beautifully from the sky and onto the ocean in the distance. You see all of these red areas and on the, the ship itself. Freighter. I don't know what you'd call this. Um, and then the waves at the foreground. And you see this is more of a cloudy sky. A little less sun but you can still see it spilling through. A lot of effects that take a lot of time to practice and master to get them to look just right. Really, there's a lot of um, skill behind everything we see here. Here's another beautiful one. And notice how, again, he's a master at turning the clouds, conveying the light really well with the clouds. You get the bottom part that's fairly orange with the sky and then the top part that's fairly blue. And again, very muted, um, very muted, transition. It's not a perfect blue. It's not a perfect orange. It's somewhere in the middle for both. Uh, look at the, the way he conveys the city here. It's just so beautiful with the 
tons of dry brush and and obviously it's not the center well it is a focal point for sure but it it's not the details that matter in this kind of a painting it's more of the overall impression in the context of the sea and the sky and even this beautiful uh you know sun that shines through with the ripples of the waves reflecting from here and if we zoom out you'll see this really has such a strong sense of sunlight i'm almost like blinded by it um and it's, of course it's an illusion but still it works so well um here's another one that i loved because this one actually shows land not sea um and the sky above it so you get to see all of these beautiful uh perhaps rural views and here i would say in addition to the cleverness of the sky and clouds as always you can see his experience come to play with the ground and the shapes on it so maybe it's a village and you see this small tower or small building the, the silhouette uh, of the shape around it like negative painting and then here you actually see the building itself is in the shadow so just a lot of clever use of shapes not just the softer shapes of the clouds but also the the harder shapes here on the ground um, and it's all very hinted nothing is really too obvious which is good in this kind of a painting there's a lot going on in the sky so you'd actually want to go a little light with the ground as well not to get it too uh you know uh too conflicting of an interest now look at this section here this is one of the things i love the most about his work you get all these clouds that are fairly muted whether they're warm or cool but then the sky is blue it's stronger on the blue side so you can clearly tell where it is uh, small cloud, just so clever the way he does it. I have to practice rendering these kinds of clouds. It's just so beautiful. Uh, here's another one, a little more rugged with the sea. The sea is a little stormier. Uh, and you get to see all of these splashes of paint and also dry, a lot of dry paint, but nothing is in excess. It doesn't feel too overworked, really. Um, notice this beautiful transition from uh, muted blue to muted peach. Um, just very well done in these clouds this for example this brush mark was applied with the perfect timing so it has a bit of this um, movement to it because the paper was a bit wet uh, but not too much <clears throat> and again this beautiful effect of a cloud layered in front of another cloud and you know how you get this you paint around it and you lift it so essentially he painted this shape and this shape separately but you can immediately tell it's one cloud the brain is really smart you just show it something and it can interpret it um, and i think that's a perfect example of his paintings another very rich one with the sky a very nice i don't even know what to call it but a, a muted golden gray with so much nuance in it and so much cleverness in it uh, the sea is pretty again pretty simple lots of dry brush here uh, here's another one. I love the wet feeling on the on the ocean itself here. Notice this. I don't know what exactly causes it. You can see some splashes of paint. You can see a lot of obviously dry brush, but then a lot of charging of dark paint into the dry brush. Um, sky's a little happier, a little bluer, which is also a nice thing to see. Notice how this cloud essentially connects to the ocean. You know, just kind of falls into it. It's just so beautiful. So the clouds, I can just stare at them, really. And I urge you to Google his paintings and look at the high quality pictures as well. It's just so smart. Here's another one. Beautiful how he left the boat uh, by use of the dark background. He made the boat pop. Um, and a very um, contradic contradicted sky, I guess. You get all these grays that are truer grays, by the way. This looks more like storm clouds. Um, and then the blues down at the bottom it's almost like if you go low enough you can escape the storm so to speak um very clever and again the waves kind of rippling towards us spilling towards us um here's another one that i really love especially the way he portrayed the the coast or the coastline uh, a lot of just negative shapes that bring out the city kind of a gloomy cloudy sunset near sunset feeling to it um the atmosphere is really strong in all of his works um, really present in all of them. Here's one that's a little different, so I'm happy to share that. Uh, a bit of a different subject, focusing more on the on the uh, coast or the rocks that you can see on the, near the beach or near a port, not necessarily the sky. Uh, but still, he conveys the sky because the sky always reflects in the water. So you still get the sky, which is really nice. Um, and then some wave ripples atop the stones or the rocks. And you can see how the rocks are blended and blurred and blurry under the water surface. It causes them to blur a bit. Um, 
notice something really interesting. You see the way he put this rock? This part was still a little wet, which is really cool. You see it bleeding into it. And it actually makes it look very good. It doesn't feel, you know, too much. It's very controlled still. And working larger sizes enables that more because you have just more room. If you put the paint there, it won't bleed all the way to the edge of the paper. If you work very small, sometimes it can be hard. It's still possible and I'm sure he does that too, but it's a little harder to, in the context of the entire painting, preserve things in certain areas. So if you're having a hard time, like a really hard time with wet and wet, try working a little larger actually. You do need to work faster though. Notice this beautiful color here. What is that? I don't know, it's a, it's a copper gray. It's really, really good, kind of sepia, uh, depending on the on the context. The local color looks more copper, but it looks a little more like sepia because of the light and shadow conditions. So just so smart. <clears throat> Let's see, this one. This is another unique one. I searched for, I found another one that is uh, I love even more, but the picture was too low quality, so I couldn't share it. But notice how green the water is and how the, w the waves take up a big portion of the painting here. The waves rippling with the foam and the, the whiteness of them, just beautiful. And then you can see some very strong green under them, even stronger than the background, which is really cool. Because if you compare this to this, this is much more muted um, and it's so clever. I don't know exactly if it's a sense that you develop with time or you relied on a reference photo to tell that this green is more pure of a green and more stronger and saturated green. But it's uh, in the context of the painting, it works perfectly well. Obviously things in the distance, you get aerial perspective at work and then they, they get more muted. So of course the green that's closer to us will be a little more vibrant, a little more saturated, even a bit more transparent possibly. Uh, but yeah, so clever. And then this tiny seagull, barely visible here. Uh, and there is an undertone of peach here, which, which is really nice. Now the last one, this is really legendary and I, I hope you stuck around till the end because this, again, I found it just, um, I found it just when I searched for uh, paintings of his and despite knowing him for a long time, I wasn't familiar with this particular piece, but I would say it's hands down my favorite by his. It's the one with the most legendary, I think, sense of light and shadow. Um, this really looks like um, one of these old biblical paintings that show all sorts of miracles and a divine um, sunlight or just divine light, I guess. Um, and it's beautifully contrasted with the dark sea. The sun is probably starting to set, the clouds become more prominent, and, uh, and the sea becomes darker. But one thing that I love, if you look at this section here, look at the color harmony of these, I hope you can see me marking, but if not, that just this area here. Notice how it's all muted again, but you do get pockets of strong blue, strong red, and strong yellow orange. This, in my opinion, is one of the thing, things really responsible for the divine sense of light and shadow with this one. Um, and of course, the edges of the clouds and all of that. So this is hands down my favorite. Uh, I hope it makes all of this video even more worth more to you because just one painting can sometimes be really impactful. And I think that's a good one for me to do a study based on. It's going to be super hard. I have no idea how to even begin, but just beautiful, beautiful work. Um, I will link down below to his videos. He has a YouTube channel and also some videos of a full painting process. As you can see the whole thing from start to finish pretty long of how he renders clouds, which I think is super valuable. So with that, let's wrap it up face to face. Thank you so much for watching. So I hope you enjoyed this one and especially the glorious sky in the last one, just incredible. I have not known the, this painting before filming this video, actually. It's the first time I came across it when I did my research and just beautiful. The treatment of shapes is so genius and the composition of sky is just composition. It allows you to do that pure composition. The elements are very ephemeral, very flowy and, and moving. And watercolor is perfect for painting that kind of a thing. Water, sky, uh, clouds that are also water in essence. Um, and I just think there's a lot to learn on the control and the way to move the paint and move the color, which is just spectacular the way he does it. And I'll definitely do a lot of studies of his uh, in the upcoming weeks and months, so you can expect more of that. I wanna thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't to my channel. I have a bunch of other episodes like this one. Uh, if you, uh, I've 
probably know if you've been watching uh, my videos and also a lot of tutorials, full real-time narrated processes that I show and share my watercolor insight. I want to thank you so much once again and I will see you again in the next episode and in the next video.